thank you so much for joining this lesson. We shall be looking at science practical. That is a integrated science practical for KGSA 2025 preparations. It's good for me to keep reminding the followers that uh, the practical will be based on photographs and diagrams. We shall not have the ants on practical because of some reasons that cannot be avoided. So this nature of practical is strictly for KGSA 2025. Maybe the decisions will be revised for 2026 onwards. But for now, this is where we are. I will take you through this sample paper and I hope you shall benefit. Kindly subscribe to this channel, Shifting Grades Online School, the home of academics. Remember to invite a friend to our broadcast. Question one, you are provided with photographs labeled P and Q. Study them and answer the questions that follow. We can see P, the diagram here. Q, the diagram here. Name the animals of the mammals shown above. So according to P, that's going to be herbivores. We call them herbivores. Herbivores. These are the mammals that feed on plant materials only. These ones feed on plant materials. But when you look at Q, well, these ones, we call them uh, omnivores. These ones now feed on both plants and flesh. Yeah, the in between of herbivores and carnivores. Mm -hmm. Then we are told to give a reason for the answers above. Okay, there are many reasons as to why we argue that. When you look at the front teeth, mm -hmm. the canines there, and the incisors, and also you look at the the back teeth, you discover that there is a gap. Okay. So there is a gap. This is for peer. The reason why we think these are herbivores, they usually have a gap between the incisors and the back teeth. There is a gap between the front teeth and we write the teeth well the front teeth and back teeth yeah there is a gap between actually this gap is called the diastema so the diastema is the gap that exists between these teeth then for Q, the reason why we think these are herbivores, that is the class actually where human beings belong. You can look at the canines. They are bluntly pointed canines. Bluntly pointed canines. Now, label the parts. This should be named, sorry. Name the part labeled K and J. So K is the gap that we are calling a diastema. K is the diastema. Then J, these are the front teeth that we call incisors. Incisors. We write well the incisors. Like that. <laughs> Now, give one structural adaptation, a structural mm -hmm. adaptation of to the, the incisors. They are narrow. Look at J. Yeah. They are narrow, sharp, and chisel shaped. Narrow. Okay, there are many features. Sharp, chisel shaped. For proper tearing. For proper tearing or cutting of plant materials. Eh? 
state the function of the part labeled K. So functions of the diastema, the gap which is existing between the teeth there, we see that the diastema allows room, allows room to manipulate plant materials. Plant materials for proper chewing. For proper chewing. You know, proper chewing is required so that the food materials, which are plant materials, plant tissues, are broken down for easy digestion, for effective digestion. Yeah, remember, the plant materials are taken by these particular animals when raw. Yeah, when raw. Therefore, for digestion, proper chewing is required. Mm -hmm. Distinguish between omodons, omodons, sorry, and heterodons, and give examples of each case. Homodons, these are type of animals or type of dentition whereby uh, the animal has similar shape and size of teeth. For example, fish. In homodons, in homodons, there is a, there is the same shape and the same size of teeth, e.g. fish. So fish is an omodont. Then we say in heterodonts, In the pterodonts, there are different sizes and shapes. There are the different sizes and shapes mm -hmm. of teeth. For example, all mammals. Mm. Whereby now we shall be classifying mm. <laughs> carnivores, omnivores, mm. and what you call uh, carnivores, mm. omnivores, herbivores, like that. So they are all heterodons. Mm. Remember, in this particular type of settings, mm. whereby we expect structured questions with mm. the diagrams and photographs, we expect the three mm. branches of science to feature. Mm. For example, here we are dealing with living things and we can say that number one, mm. question number one is from biology. Mm. Yeah, that's from biology, mm. whereby we deal with living things, plants and animals. Mm. But in question two now, we can see we are studying a certain image here. Name the apparatus. When you look at these apparatus, mm -hmm. you discover that it's, uh, this is a Bunsen burner. It's a Bunsen, mm -hmm. a Bunsen burner. Then it has some some parts. Mm -hmm. Whereby part A, mm -hmm. this one is the flame itself. Mm -hmm. That's the flame. Then we have a part B here, which is the chimney. That's the chimney. Then we have part C here. Part C is called the collar. Then we have part D, which is the gas inlet. The gas inlet. So we have uh, those parts. Uh huh. Look at part B of the same. Name other two apparatus that can be used as a source of heat in the laboratory. Mm -hmm. Apart from bats and barn, we can use candles. We can use the spirit lamps. Spirit, uh, spirit lamps. We can use kerosene lamp. We 
we can also use spirit lamps, oh, spirit lamps, kerosene lamps, portable banners, you can use portable banner, any two. Portable banner, ETC, there are many, but those are just a few. Yeah. Stage two safety measures that should be used when handling the apparatus above, that is uh, the bars and banner one, you should ensure that uh, you turn off when not in use. Turn off when not in use. This is to save or to save, yeah, to save on the lab gas. We have laboratory gas, which is being used. So to save on it, you turn off when not in use. You can also ensure that for your own safety now. You know, in the lab, we talk about safety economically when handling the apparatus and also safety as you look at your own self. So do not lean your body towards the flame. Do not lean your body towards the flame. This to ensure that you don't burn your temper. So that is the part from chemistry part of science. So this is chemistry. Mm -hmm. Then we can now look at uh, the last question, which is on mm -hmm. physics part of science. Remember our program here for the holiday. Actually, we are calling it one time ahead program. Please refer your siblings to this. We shall be covering from 10th of November to 12th of December, 2025 via Google Meet, term one work of 2026. We are targeting the junior school, the senior school. Our consultation line is already attached on the wall, 0704153366. Please reach out so that you may know much about our programs, so that you may get to understand what happens in shifting grades online school. We shall turn your lives around when it comes to mm -hmm. academics. This is the home of academics. Question three, you are provided with the following diagram. Study it and answer the questions that follow. You can see these are circuit diagram. And actually, from how it is, we are supposed to correct a few things. That's how mm -hmm. a voltmeter should appear. Then when an ammeter is represented in a circuit diagram, this is how it should appear. Actually, yeah. <clears throat> but now looking at the V here, the Z is a voltmeter. Looking at the A at this point, Y is an ammeter. So the first thing is to name the apparatus. One is X. X is a switch. Then when we look at Y, that's ammeter. Then we are having the voltmeter as Z. Now, even if Y and Z were not having the A and the B, it's good for you to know that a voltmeter is usually connected across the other components. You see, the ammeter is in series. After the batteries and before the bulbs, we have the ammeter. But across the batteries, that's where we have the voltmeter. So voltmeter, due to its nature, that uh, it has very high resistance, it cannot be connected in series with other components. Actually, if voltmeter is connected in series with other components, nothing shall flow. We will not have current flowing because of the high resistance of a voltmeter. Therefore, it has to be connected across the other components or rather in parallel with other components. So it is in parallel with the with the cells, as you can see them. Uh, give the use of the above named apparatus in the setup above. X is a switch, so that one completes the circuit. It completes the circuit. And actually, it can also be used for the opposite. When a circuit is complete, we will use the switch <coughs> to disconnect it and make it incomplete. Y, which is the ammeter, that one records electric current, records or measures, actually it measures, not even recording, measures electric current. 
it measures electric current. Then the voltmeter, that one measures potential difference. Measures potential difference, or rather measures voltage. It measures potential difference. Part C, what is the type of arrangement observed by the bulbs and also the dry cells? When you look at the bulbs, this is one bulb and this is the other. <clears throat> now, in case bulb A, you can have A and B. In case bulb A is removed from this system, we shall have bulb B continuing to work. If we remove bulb B, then A shall continue functioning. Such an arrangement whereby the removal of one bulb does not affect the other one. We call it a parallel arrangement. Actually, you can be asked to explain why in domestic wiring, lamps are always in parallel connection. This is to ensure that in case one bulb is faulty, the others continue functioning. Imagine bulbs which are like this. A bulb there, another one there, such that we have a bulb X and Y. You know, in case bulb X is faulty, because it's along the same circuit, Y will also not function even if Y is good. Even if Y is in good condition, it shall not function. Therefore, the reason why bulbs are always connected in parallel is to ensure that in case one is faulty, the other one continues working. Then look at the cells. We have one here and another one here. <clears throat> you see, the positive of one is at the negative of the other. That's called a series connection. So they are in a series arrangement. Series arrangement. Yeah. Series arrangement. Part B. State two sources of electricity apart from the one used above, apart from the batteries. We can have solar energy. We can have wind energy. We can have geothermal power. We can have geothermal. Geothermal power. We can have hydroelectric power. Hydro. Electric power. Yeah. Hydroelectric power like that. So that's how you're supposed to handle the paper. You're supposed to interact with Diagrams in Integrated Science, Paper 2, the KJSA 2025. We're wishing you success. Thank you so much for following. Stay tuned and subscribe for mathematics and other tutorials. Thank you.